What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. If you haven't watched my last video, which was a Wahoo video, a Wahoo Catch, Clean and Cook, you need to stop what you're doing right this second and go watch it. Besides the fact that it's an awesome video, I do a giveaway in it that you have to see what the giveaway is about and then you gotta come watch this video to learn the answer. So you gotta guess something in that video, then watch this video to learn the answer to see if you won. We just got home from the Bahamas. We were there for three days on the Poppy Chulo. It's a 62 Garlington with Captain Chris and the first mate squid. Did we deep dropped? We caught Wahoo, caught some tuna, caught some giant queens. But most importantly, what you're gonna see in this video right here is we caught some of the rarest fish I've ever seen. I didn't even know they existed. And I've got my brother, Dr. Aubrey Arrington, coming here to see him. I haven't even opened the cooler yet because Aubrey wants to dissect them. He wants to look at them. He is a marine biologist in trade. That's what he went and got his doctor's degree with. He loves fish, especially rare fish. Also, I gotta give a huge shout out to Outboard Specialties in Pompano, Mike and Mike. They beat anybody's price. They gave me the best price I could find on these motors. They installed them the same day. Test drove them for me today. Got the props right, got everything right, and I am ready to go fishing. So all we're doing now is waiting on Aubrey, but let's take it back to the Bahamas. We're deep dropping in almost 2,000 foot of water. You gotta realize 2,000 foot is a long ways down. There's no light down there. There's, it's, it, it might as well be Mars. And we catch these awesome fish. I think it's called an oil fish. Aubrey's gonna explain that when he gets here, but we also caught a lizard fish and we caught a palm frit. That was such a fun, much needed trip, it's insane. So please, if you haven't watched my last video, go watch it and then this video will make a lot more sense. Shaking the tree, baby. Shaking the tree. big some bigs on the bottom Rupa. no a barrel fish a barrel fish right yeah I've never seen one I never I haven't caught one easy so that's what they oil fish freaking things oil fish that's pretty oh sorry freaking look at that I gotta get a thumbnail with that thing. I heard you sold your 350s, but I didn't know you got new 300s. Yeah, I just got them put on. We need your professional experience with these fish. Open that cooler up. All right, now this is some of this tuna and wahoo you can take home with you, but right there, here, pick that up and set it up here. I gotta film you because then I know I got the expert footage. There's three different species in there. Look at that eyeball. Man. And that's not foggy, folks, at home. That's how it came out of the ocean. All right, set him up here, and we'll get back to him. Pretty so, neat, huh? I don't think, I was assuming that was an Escalar, but that, I don't think that's an Escalar. I think that's a Scombrops. A what? A Scombrop, I don't I can't even pronounce that. That joker was in 1,900 foot of water. You already know what that is. But I've never, I've never caught one of these. Matches your shirt. It does. Check out this fish. Oh man. That one came from 1900 too. That is so crazy. Open his mouth. Oh, lizard fish are crazy. Look at the teeth. He's got two rows. Oh man, he's killing my fingers. Ah, oh, his tongue is loaded with teeth. Yeah, there's one Look more. At the, huh? the top of his mouth yeah. is like a barracuda. Like a moray eel. Yeah. And they're all the way in the back too. Yeah, man. That thing is crazy. One more. Ah, Pomfret. That's cool. That's the only one I've ever been on the boat. So I've never caught these three. Obviously, I've caught not too many queens, but never caught these. So all three of these were caught in the same spot, 1,900 feet of water. Really? But I was hoping you were going to give us some professional, like... Tips on, on it. You ain't holding back. That's that Wenchman snapper. Yeah, those are my favorite eating ones. Really? They're good. Is that all that's left in there? Just Wenchman, yeah. Is 
That's it. All right, what can you tell us scientifically about these fish? I got to do some some research. I wasn't I was expecting that to be an escalar, but I'm pretty sure it's not. D open that joker's teeth. Here, let's put the tuna back in here because that's all sushi grade. You probably don't like eating that. Do sushi you? grade. Does tuna come in any other grade? Yeah, it comes in old grade. Open this, oh, dude. Bro, I got to get reading glasses now. At 42, <laughs> it's caught up to me. I can't see close. 45 was the number for He's me. He's even got teeth down his throat. Oh my goodness. I got to go get my phone real quick so I have I can zoom in better. Hey, listen, what do you do? You're a PhD fish ecologist. Your brother calls you and goes, I got a cooler full of cool stuff we caught deep dropping over in the Bahamas. Man, I ain't seen half of these fish before. I was like, I got to get over there and check them out. I'm about to figure out what this joker is. We know the queen. That's a beautiful fish. Really interesting. These queens, that big forked tail. That's a constantly moving fish, I believe. Winchman, cool. That lizard fish. These jokers lay right on the bottom, just like this. They will lay right on the bottom and they're waiting for anything to come swimming by and they're gonna come straight up off the bottom. I used to fish out of Stewart with this old guy, Captain Dick Madsen, old mad dog, we called him. We'd go out off of uh, Stewart in his old boat, the DB, we'd be trolling planers. You know, like 90 feet off of Stewart, trolling around kingfish, balls of bait trying to catch sailfish whatever a planer dragging a drone spoon or a strip lizard fish would swim off the bottom and eat the planer bait it looks like a python so one of the things we talk about in ecology is functional anatomy animals their shape tells you clues on what they do those big old eyes huge eyes the black coloration, this is a nocturnal fish, or it's actually so deep it's never daylight. Those big, giant, like, gaping mouth, you better believe if you fit halfway in this joker's mouth, he's gonna bite you if you come swimming by and try and swallow you. The teeth on the tongue, all that's adapted for grabbing prey, holding them, and pushing them down into the stomach. All these, these are the premaxilla and the maxilla. And then they've got these vomerine teeth up on top of the mouth. They got that tongue patch of teeth. So there's a vomerine teeth and a tongue there, or the, the roof. They got teeth on the tongue. That's a, just a crazy fish. How about his eyeballs? Oh, I love that. Man, you think that thing can't see at night? Joker would be wearing night vision goggles all the time. Tell us about this lizard fish. So the, it's crazy to me that the lizard fish and this fish were caught at the same depth. Open his mouth. Look at the rows of teeth. Oh my goodness. It Bro, nothing slipping out of his mouth. Nothing at all. Look at all the way down into the, the um, pharyngeal teeth. This right here is called, sorry, this right here is called the pharyngeal apparatus. So those are the last thing you see before he swallows you into his gut. All of the um, gill rakers have all these teeth on them, all these teeth here. I promise you, if he gets a hold of you, you're going down the gullet. So you know what one thing is they told me about the queen snapper that I never paid attention to? So the queen snapper is the only snapper that when you catch it very deep and bring it up fast, its eyes don't bulge and it can swim straight back down. Oh, that's cool. Well, we'll be curious to see his um, swim bladder. Oh, you know, so there are some fish that, like swordfish, will swim super deep and up, and they don't pop out. They don't. Yeah, he doesn't out pop either. out either. So I bet these jokers are covering a lot of ground vertically when they're cruising. That's another big giant eye. We caught. And you know them what we're going to do on both of these, all three of these? We'll cut out the eye and we'll look on the inside. So they call it the tapetum lucidum. So you have an eyeball and the light comes in this way through the lens. You can see the lens right there on that fish. So the light comes through the lens and it hits the retina, which is a layer of nerves in front of the back of the eye. But then the back of the eye after the retina is super on things that have decent night vision. It's super reflective. I bet this fish, the back of his eye, the hard part, is going to look like opal. It'll be so pretty. So we got to check that out. That's my working hypothesis. You check out mine. They're starting to get a little blurry. <laughs> For some reason, the other day, like a week ago, I started noticing. So right here, that my hands blurry, 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 blurry. Perfect, right there. 
Blurry. So you can Perfect. use a, the the way to test this is lay a normal book or normal text yeah. on a piece of paper and stand up a ruler. Normally, I think your focal distance should be like eight or ten inches, and you'll see the older you get, the further you got to hold that joker away. At some point, your arms aren't long enough. So we haven't even talked about the palm print. That's just his stomach. Yeah. Old palm print. He's a unique looking dude yeah, too. He doesn't have much teeth. He has like snook like teeth, like a yeah, tarpon. Yeah, yeah, like a largemouth bass, really. Joker's just down here minding his own business till a swordfish whacks him in the side. I'm telling you. Now some That's of the just some like of the a lane snapper basically. Oh, these are my favorite deep, but some Look of how the big his eye is. Some of the lynchman's eyes pop out and some don't. Like you'll catch three on a stringer, two will be popped out and one will be fine. Huh. Maybe it just depends what they had had for dinner the night before. Put your glove on so you don't get cut. Hey, look, this ain't you trying to cut your thumb off. Let's clean half of each one because I want to cook them later. All right. And then I want you to take the eyeballs out. Let's. I guess nothing's in its stomach. Yeah, you can't do what's in their stomach because they right. regurgitated everything. Let's clean him and see what his meat looks like. Oh, it's... He's actually softer than I was expecting. Billy Gerlach told me that this is what they sell in the sushi restaurants. This is the really white meat. And if I you eat more than one bite, you'll poop your pants. I don't think that that's an Escalar. That's what, when you told me what you caught, that's what I was assuming this was. Man, this fish is soft. The meat is so soft. And we put him right on ice I'm, immediately. I don't know about this. Looks so, like grouper meat. It looks just like gag grouper. Yeah, it, it's not as firm as a gag. I can tell just filleting them. Old Danko's are always dangerously sharp. I know that. Yeah, especially that's a... Not that an old one's not sharp, but that's a new one. It looks just like a gag, maybe a hair darker. Yeah, it's definitely darker, and I think it's going to be a lot mushier. Feel how soft it is? Huh. He's got pretty meat, but I heard it's bony. Yeah, yeah, they have a big row of bones right down the side. Man, those scales are tough. What do you think it feels like to get ripped up from 1,900 feet? I don't know. And with that... LP it doesn't take very long. Man, that's that is gonna be a bony fish. It's Look like a bones. it's sort of like a sand tile. Yeah, I see that. We can cut around Another the bone. sand tiles. We'll just tie, try a piece raw. I don't know if I'm doing that. Sand tiles just have that one row of pin bones. I don't act like I never cleaned a fish before on this one. Let me see. It looks nice, but you can oh, feel all the bones. Oh, there's one here, yeah. one here. I yeah, don't even yeah, think yeah. you'll be able to eat it. Yeah. There's a couple rows of bones, I think. I know the palm print's good. You had palm print before? Yeah, Nick loves them. Yeah, I was going to say, you and Nick caught them. Nice I've one. never caught one, but Nick catches them. I'm interested to see this one's eyeball. Oh, I know. I want to do that. Looks just about like a... Small swordfish's eyeball. Uh huh. What was the traffic jam on 995 about? Oh my god! Accident or something? I actually got off at Hope Sound. Oh, so you didn't see it? Well, I got off at Hope Sound, and then when I was getting ready to turn to come over here, I could see it was moving again. So I jumped right back on, and I, the accident must have been on the overpass at Hope Sound. Aubrey was supposed to be here an hour and a half ago, but there was a traffic jam. I live right off uh, I-95, which is the main highway that goes up and down the east coast of Florida, and there was a bad accident, like normal. For some reason, this is literally the Bermuda Triangle for accidents. All right. That don't look bad. That don't look bad at all. All right, let's throw these in here. Those are the carcasses? Yeah, I'll clean the rest of them later. I'm going out to hunting camp. I'm cutting the eye out of that. Um... We'll throw this fillet in here, too, so you have room. This meat definitely doesn't look too appetizing. No. This does not look... You know what else is like this are piranhas. I've eaten a bunch of piranhas in Venezuela. They also have nice looking meat, but they're full of bones. So you, we would just fry them whole and then eat them real carefully. That might be the way to eat that. 
Mm. All right, let's cut this eyeball out. That joker. Use that smaller knife so you don't have a. I like the big one, to be honest. Look at that weird skin around that's got eye. like a scale. Well, I think it's a aerodynamic to keep his eye. If you have kids and you've never cut out an eyeball of a fish before, you're depriving your kids. There's nothing the kid likes more when you're cleaning a fish than to cut the fish eyeball out and hand it to them. I did it the other day with a deer and I sat there and looked at it for a while. Oh yeah, it's cool. All right, so your basic eyeball, so you have muscles which move your eye around and change it, can squeeze it around. And then here's your big optic nerve. Got to send all that information back to the brain. So you can see the optic nerve right there. Your brain on a human, your brain consumes 20% of the oxygen your body consumes. And your eye is a big part of the information you're dealing with. So that optic nerve, it goes straight from your retina right to your brain because there's tons of computing power there. Oh, oh eye like juice. A, like a gusher just popped. Oh, I'll be your hands killing us. There you go. So there's the lens. You could see that through his eyeball. I don't know if you can see it better on the yeah. glove or on my hand. On the glove. You can see that. So that lens, the light comes in through the pupil, right? The middle part there, the clear part of your eye. Here, I'll roll it over. So the lens is right there. The light comes in through the pupil. It goes through the lens and the lens focuses it on the back of your eye, which is where the retina is. The retina is the nerve on the back of your eye that captures all the light coming in. And then it actually turns that into a computer signal for your brain, you know, information. So here, this is what I was, I told you, this is exactly what I predicted. I love doing this stuff like this. I just hope nobody ever does it to me. Well, as long as you're dead, it won't matter. Okay, see how shiny that junk is? I told you it's gonna look like a opal. Go, go back on the video and Looks like- Looks like a pearl. Yeah, pearl, opal, mother of pearl. So again, the retina, I already scooped out part of it. The nerve here. So this is the retina. It's a fine layer of nerves that lay in front of that. Again, light comes, light comes through your pupil. So you have the pupil there, light comes in, it goes through the lens, it hits the retina on the back. And then because this fish has such a little bit of light, the retina is there, and then this shiny layer, the tapetum lucidum, is back there, and the light, any available light that goes through the retina bounces back through the retina. So it passes the light twice through the retina, and that helps a joker see in super low light conditions. There's the, you can see. That's cool. You learn something new every day. I'm just wondering how many high school biology teachers are gonna think I'm wrong. I don't know. I miss that part in class. That's cool though. So if you ever look at like a backside of a deer eye, it won't be near that shiny. And like if we went and caught a largemouth bass, it would be a little shiny, but nowhere near that shiny. So it's shiny because of how dark it is? Because the fish has such a little bit of light, it's that shininess reflects that light back through the retina. So it goes in, hits it and it reflects out and it's just trying to use all the light it has available. It's trying not to waste any light. So while Aubrey's looking on his phone trying to figure out exactly what that fish is, I'm gonna go ahead and give the exact amount of gas that we bought while we were in the Bahamas that you have to know to win the giveaway. $2,189.50. Good luck to all of you. If you win, I will find you and I will leave a comment under your comment telling you how to get to my Facebook or to my Instagram. I'm not a robot. You better not fall for any robots. You'll know if it's me. So good luck to all y'all. What'd you figure out? Or you're texting somebody? I texted dad. Dad tried to call me. I'm like, I'm at Gabe's house. He's filming. I can't answer. I don't even think we're going to eat this thing in this video. I got to go. I got time to go to hunting camp. Aubrey just explained some stuff that was really, really interesting to me. I will eat it in the next video because I'm going to hunting camp. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. 
Thanks for all the positive comments. But right now, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of shape. See y'all.